Let's talk about how to fix a limp when you walk. I'm gonna explain some of the potential causes and what you can do on your own at home to fix your limp. And I'll be sharing tons of resources to help you on what may be a challenging journey ahead. If you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. For the purposes of this video, walking with a limp means you're walking with a noticeable drag or unevenness between the two sides of your lower body. It might look like this, like this, or like this. What causes these limps? It could be from an injury or just general misuse or disuse. If your toes and feet don't work well, you'll limp. If your ankles don't work well, you'll limp. If your knees don't work well, you'll limp. If your hips don't work well, you'll limp. If the muscles that connect your pelvis to your ribcage and spine don't work well, you'll limp. If your shoulder and neck muscles are super uneven, you'll be off kilter and limp. To fix a limp, we aren't going to dive into surgical fixes. Instead, we'll ATM always think muscles because muscles move bones and muscles are the organs of movement. To fix a limp, you need to identify the most obvious contributors and start training out the muscle dysfunctions and imbalances. So let's look at some examples. Let's say your left big toe cannot dorsiflex well. When you walk, you avoid loading into the big toe muscles. This results in a twist and rotation all the way up. You don't fix this with thicker shoes. You gently stretch and strengthen the underside of the big toe and the top of the big toe to get used to the dorsiflex position. As with anything, you wanna take it slow, gradually expand your range of motion, gradually increase the demands on your toes. If you have weak foot muscles, start with some simple exercises to improve foot function. Toe spreading, toe curls, and toe lifts are all good exercises to start restoring foot function. I've got a video that will help you with this that I'll link to in the description box. What about your ankles? Maybe you have an ankle that's super stiff after you sprained it for the seventh time walking on a gopher infested field. This will result in compensations in the foot, knee, and hip. You need to restore motion to your ankle with a little massage, stretching, and strength work. After an injury or just a long period of immobilization, muscles atrophy, and then you have atrophy-induced immobility. Gentle massage of your foot and ankle with your fingers can help. Tool-assisted massage of your calf and shin muscles can help. Calf raises and shin raises can help as well. Do a couple sets to fatigue a couple days a week and you'll likely see some improvement. And of course, do extra sets for the more problematic side. The video that I did on foot exercises also includes some basic ankle exercises, so be sure to check out that link when you're done watching this video. Check the description box. Years ago, I was doing barbell squats and felt a gigantic pop in my left knee. For the first week, I could barely bend the knee at all. This resulted in a big limp where I was swinging my leg out to the side and hiking my hip. The fix was restoring muscle balance around the knee and gradually, gently restoring its strength. I made a video about the stretch that helped me there and I'll link to that in the description box as well. Your knees might be weak. They might be super stiff and painful. I've made a video with simple exercises for your knees that I'll also link to in the description box. The point here is you gotta rebuild knee function so you can walk without a limp. Hey, I wanna say thanks to the following YouTube members, Rita, Matt, Leonard, Paul, and Fabian. Thank you very much for your support. If you wanna support me too, use the join or thanks buttons on YouTube or become a Patreon patron using the donate link in the description box. And if you haven't already, go to uprighthealth.com to join my newsletter so we always stay connected. Now let's get back to it. Now let's talk about the hips. I haven't met someone who has perfectly symmetrical hips. And that's okay. When you kick a ball, you have a leg you favor. When you write, you probably use your right hand, unless you're a spawn of a demon of Hades. The point is, being asymmetrical is not pathological. You just want to make sure you have reasonably symmetrical function. So test yourself. Are your hip flexors fairly equal in their flexibility? What about in strength? Are your butt muscles equally flexible and strong? If not, make sure you're doing glute exercises to improve the strength and symmetry of your glute muscles. Many people have clear asymmetries in strength and flexibility in their inner thighs and outer hips. You'll see this with a big tilt or rotation in the pelvis. Stretching the inner and outer thighs can make a big difference. Stretching and strengthening the hip rotators can help as well. For example, if one leg is externally rotated and the other is internally rotated, you can work on restoring balance by practicing the opposite motion for each leg. 
For the side that's externally rotated, plant that foot further from the anchor point. Use the other leg lightly to help balance. Then move your pelvis and torso as you pretend you're slowly chopping wood. Follow through. This will train your hip internal rotators. For the side that's internally rotated, plant that foot closer to the anchor point and use the other foot for balance. Turn away like you're chopping a tree, creating external rotation on that leg. These types of exercises will help you uncover and retrain imbalances. Strengthening weak muscles all over your hips will put you into a more symmetrical state. I also made a couple videos about fixing a twisted pelvis that I'll link to in the description box, so check that out after the end of this video. Now let's talk about your core. There are muscles that connect your pelvis to your spine and ribs. If these hold you in an awkward position, you're stuck in a limp. Simple side stretches can be super helpful to loosen up the stiff connections. You can do these seated or standing. I'll link a detailed video on a good side stretch that you can do at home in the description box, so check it out at the end of this video. And you can use weight to help you build strength at every length. Working your core muscles in the front with straightforward ab exercises like dead bugs or heel taps can help. And if you aren't a surfer who spends all day with his back arched, you might want to do some supermans or similar exercises to build a little more strength around your lower back. Finally, don't neglect the sides. Side planks or V-ups are a great way to build strength in your side abs. Just make sure to do them extra for the weaker side. And finally, if your neck and shoulders are out of whack, how are you going to walk without a limp? If I were carrying a kettlebell in one hand and walking, I wouldn't be able to maintain perfect symmetry. It's just impossible. Your head is just like a kettlebell. It's hard and can be purchased on Craigslist for 50 cents to a buck 50 a pound. It's also heavy enough to offset your whole body. Neck stretching and strengthening exercises can help you bring symmetry to your neck and shoulders. I'll link to my most popular neck and shoulder videos in the description box to help you fix things up here. But briefly, the idea is to stretch out the stiff side and restore even levels of strength to both sides. For example, if my left shoulder rides up all the time, I could do a simple stretch like this to lengthen these muscles on the side. Then I can do some strengthening by using light contractions on both sides to make sure things are even. I don't have to do these hard. I want to pay attention to how they feel and how strong each side feels. Now, you might be wondering how to figure out where to start. The answer is you probably already know. Most people have a sense of their major weak points. You probably remember at least the last time you tweaked your ankle or couldn't rely on your bad knee or hip. You also remember that nagging hitch in your back that's almost always on that one side. So wherever you notice those asymmetries and weaknesses, start there. If you really don't know, film yourself with your phone from the front and side. Look at each section by section. Do you see your feet pointing out at different angles? Do you see that carried up into the hip? Do you see one knee unable to bend? Is your head chronically searching for something off to the left? Where did I put that ukulele? Don't overthink this. Pick the low-hanging fruit. In other words, choose the two most obvious areas of concern and start doing exercises to explore and retrain the problems you see. Are you gonna be as efficient and fast as an outside expert will be? Maybe, maybe not. It's easy to imagine that experts always know what's best for you, but speaking from experience, there are a lot of experts who are caught up in their own narrow, so dogmatic, it's almost a religion perspective that they will make months or years of mistakes before ever considering that their strategies may not be right for you. This exercise works 100% of the time, and if it's not working for you, you're doing it wrong. So don't throw in the towel too early. The time you spend learning about your own own body is always time well spent. In the coming weeks, I'll post more videos on improving your walking gait, and I will link them in the description box. In the meantime, if you're looking for a program to help you retrain your body at home, head to uprighthealth.com DIY and find a program that'll work for you. For more videos to fix issues while walking, check these out here. Use the donate link in the description box to support this channel or the join and thanks buttons on YouTube. I'd love to see you on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. Where did I put that guitar?